Hello and welcome everyone to Sports Bash. I am Toi Papayan and Chennai Super Kings have handed a thumping defeat to Rajasthan Royals. Remember, these two sides were the ones who had made it to the finals of the inaugural IPL edition all those years back in 2008. Ever since that match, both the sides have embarked on contrasting IPL journeys and today has been just an extension of that truth. It's a complete revamp of panelists we have for this show today. We have Akshay, Mr. Akshal Lathia. Uh, Lathia, yes, uh, who is a CSK fan. Glad to have you over here. And we have Rutul Mehta as well to join us. And so, I mean, it's before we go to all the good things that CAC, CSK had done in this game, Let's first ask Kulfutul about the story of Chetan Sakaria. You know, it's the dream of every Indian bowler to not only play the IPL, but also dismiss one of the best IPL batsmen in Dhoni and Raina and the young 22-year-old Saurashtra Pacer dismissed both of them in one over today. What do you think about that? this young, apprising Pacer? Uh, thank you, Dwaipen, for that introduction. And I'd like to first congratulate Sports Bash for taking such a good initiative and inviting people like me and Akshar who have been following the sports for a long time. Uh, and coming back to the question, so uh, as, uh, as he has been in the spotlight since the uh, inauguration of this edition, Chetan has been uh, playing at a very good level since long and has also... <clears throat> Uh, performed very well in the IPL and talk, taking about the wickets, the over that he bowled particularly was exceptionally well. Before that over, he went for 20 odd runs in the two overs and from then he came back, got the two wickets, got the RR back into the <clears throat> game and yeah, I believe that was a very important uh, over and yeah, it would uh, give, a, give him and his young career a very good boost and I hope he learns from the legends of the game. Yes, absolutely. Chetan Sakaria had made his debut in the first game of Rajasthan Royals this season. In that game, he had picked up big names in KL, Rahul and Mayank Agarwal. In his game, he's only performed better. So, as we mentioned, he's very young and has a really long and bright future in front of him. More power and strength to him from all of us here here in Sports Bash. Now, as we move forward, let's talk. Let's start about CSK's batting. You know, Akshar, there there are two ways we can look at the CSK innings: the good approach where all batsmen try to play all their shots, and some criticism on you know how uh, all IPL captains so far has spoken about the requirement of one set batsman at the start of the early death. Overs, CSK did not have that, but they still managed to put up a pretty healthy and winning score at the end. Yeah, thanks, Vipan, for the question. I think that's an amazing question. That is something, even though I'm happy that CSK has won, that is something that we need to think about in the long term as the tournament is very long. It's just the beginning of the tournament. Uh, if you can see uh, the kind of batting lineup that CSK has, uh, it's more of a variable of a you know, what kind of player selections they have. Uh, I think there is no one right now uh, who we, who can work as an anchor. I think Pav du, Duplessis is one of such players who can play an anchor. But the issue with Ruturaj Gaikwad not getting the groove, you know, not hitting it like he used to in the last three games of previous IPL season. If uh, he is not going like that, it becomes important that Pav has to go and hit the big sixes and try and take risky shots, you know. Otherwise, Pav du can be that anchor he can drop in and on the other end, everyone can go, uh, go out and hit it. The good thing is that there is depth. As you can see that till the eighth wicket, ninth wicket, uh, there are still players who can hit it out of the park, you know, uh, score at two, more than uh, 200 and 300 strike rate. So that is the good thing about CSK. But I think today, uh, the total, any, anyways, we won by 45 runs, which I don't think truly reflects the total. I think on a pitch like Mumbai with a very uh, with a good team against CSK today, uh, it might have been a very close match. But uh, yeah, to, uh, kudos to the to Ravindra Jadeja especially uh, with that uh, good dismissal of Butler. I think uh, that was the turning point, and uh, that uh, the result is very different from what we would have expected. Yeah, but uh, I definitely feel Chennai were 10-15 runs short uh, today. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll come to that. But just to stick for a moment in CSK's batting, I feel this year there is more intent on their part. You know, even for Dhoni, there has been a visible shift in the way he's trying to uh, play faster. In the first game of Chennai Super Kings this year against the Delhi Capitals, Avesh Khan was able to knock over MS Dhoni for a two-ball duck. But there was a shining light in the sense that Dhoni was going to play shots, you know, and as we had seen, a big criticism of his gameplay last year was how he was eating up deliveries at the start, but was not being able to convert those into match-winning knocks. So, to this, I think, has a lot to do with Muin Ali, Sam Karan and how their contributions have not only helped in the polling, but also has added that extra batting cushion that allows people like Dhoni, Jadeja, Fab, to Plessy to go for their shots. Uh, moving forward, you mentioned about Ravindra Chadeja. If someone had watched today's game, especially the second half, there was just no way how one could keep him away from the action. It was, you know, also interesting how he signaled this at the end of his oh. catch. You know, always the entertainer, people known as the rock star, known as the Sir Chadeja. But it's an in- interesting thing. CSK is not a very young side, but Ravindra Chadeja, I think, really uplifts the morale of the entire side by having such wonderful uh, fielding things, fielding shows. Yeah, man. Uh, so, if you see, uh, so there was one interesting event that happened during the match. If you remember, uh, when Jadeja got hit on a no ball for a six, uh, just the next ball when he was bowling the free hit, Dhoni called him out saying that ball abhi suka hai, turn hoga. Okay. So, that is the kind of bra- brain that is be- behind the stumps for Jadeja to perform, right? And I think that turn helped him in the next over to get out Butler. And uh, if you see Rav- Ravindra Jadeja's energy, amazing, man. He So, I heard the commentators mentioned that he was moving from mid-on to mid-on when there were a left and right and combination going on. For someone uh, to move so much distance in the field and given that IPL, they have to complete in a restricted amount of time, uh, so he has to do it like it will take up a lot of his energy and then also perform. Uh, that is out of this world. That is out of this world, definitely. Yeah, no, no not only is it's his batting, uh, it's his cricket brains that help Chennai achieve the right results. You know, in this game, we saw when Chadeja had first came into goal, Josh Butler had reverse swept him twice for fours. In the second, oh, still. Jadeja was persisted. Dhoni gave him his over. The second over was slightly better. And the third over, as you mentioned, had a great spinning bold for Butler. So these are small things that really contributed to CSK's win. Frutul Rajasthan went from 87 for 2 in 11 overs to 95 for 7 in 14 and a half overs. You know, it, uh, you know as much as we could appreciate Chennai Super Kings and Dhoni, there's definitely something that they could have done better. Uh, first, uh, they could have uh, approached the inning with uh, some logic. Uh, uh, the logic being that uh, they didn't uh, calculate uh, the risk that they need to take. Uh, so they were appro- uh, they were uh, around uh, around tenth over mark. They knew that they have to go about 11, 11 and a half per over. So from there on, they need to have at least one player who is going after uh, <clears throat> a bowler and trying to get a, a boundary or two in an over. But uh, they, uh, didn't see anyone getting that uh, hit for or like anyone going for that hit. And also that whenever they tried to target any bo- uh, any bowler, there were it was from the both the ends. So there was no one that was able to settle there. And since there was no one at the end of 14th over, the game was done and dusted there itself. And also that since <clears throat> the experience is uh, lacking in that middle order, you can see with the elimination of uh, Stokes to the injury, they don't have anyone there to support and guide the players that uh, the lights of Parag, the right, uh, we know that Tiwatia has been a good player for them, but he's still inexperienced at this stage. He he has to learn. He has got a lot of things to learn. So yeah, he can learn from this, and I hope uh, they make a comeback. I like. I really like the combination that they have found, and I, I believe it was uh, Chennai's day in the bowling that won the the game, not the batting. 
six one then the game. So yeah, I believe Rajasthan can make a comeback given that they find somebody to anchor the inning better. Like the uh, Sanju Samson inning in the in the Kings Eleven match, you can see that how he anchored, how he paced the innings. If somebody could do that. For uh, like not every not every game we can expect uh, Sanju to do that, but yeah, someone needs to be there in every game for them to do that. Yeah, these are very valid points made. I feel these are such poor chasing performances. Reinstate how important were knocks like Shikhar Dhawan that he played last game in Mumbai against the side where he you know against Punjab where he scored that 92 or so less. In no time, all almost with all those blazing shots. Talking about Shikhar Dhawan's side, we move on to having a short preview discussion on Delhi Capitals versus Mumbai Indians, which is the game tomorrow. The biggest thing I feel is the change of venues for Delhi Capitals. I think this is the first time this season we are seeing a particular side playing in the second ground. And after for all the good things that the league capitals were able to do in Mumbai, there are certainly some adjustments that need to be made. Maybe bringing a particular play, play, player to support certain matchups. Uh, Aksar, what do you think? What will be the in the minds of the DC camp? Yeah, so DC, it will be tricky for DC to uh, adjust those conditions, right? As you mentioned, that Tavan went on to hit 92 of at a uh, nearly strike rate of 200. Uh, which is at a pitch of Vankhede, which where the ball comes in good, the bounce is nice, versus the pitch in C, uh, in Chennai, Chepak, uh, where the ball is not coming, especially when you are chasing, it becomes very tricky in the end. Uh, you you can't see the ball at the middle of the bat, and uh, you know you got you are getting caught out in the uh, out in the middle. Uh, but I think it won't be that much of a challenge, considering DC is very good at chasing. Uh, we have seen in last couple of matches they are very good. They know how to pace the inning. They have, as we are talking, right, anchor. They have anchors there. Uh, Pant is also playing very good. Like a real, like mature captain, he's playing his innings. He knows, like, he doesn't have to be a slog hitter. So, I think, uh, and Pant's power will come in handy when store balls will come in. I think it will be a good matchup. Even DC with their bowling lineup, amazing bowling lineup. They also, Rabada and all, knows how to go, how to bowl a good slower ball, go for Yorker at the end. So, I think that will be a very interesting match. Yes, we saw Sotul for a momentary second, you know, take off his earphones and let Ak Akshar speak about DC because he is a big MI fan. When you speak in, and MI fans, as they deserve to do, they just are not interested in discussions <laughs> when someone is speaking against their side in a game against them. So, Shotul, you seem to have a brimming smile on your face. And why not? Mumbai Indians have well and truly arrived in IPL 2021. They have put up some top performances where they have returned, where they come back from the dead. And uh, more importantly, they have played in a similar... They are already playing in Chennai, so it's a similar venue for them. What do you think about MI for tomorrow's game, Rutul? Yeah, I believe on a very good knock from Rohit Sharma is due long uh, in the IPL, and he has been uh, he has been getting into that uh, rhythm, but not able to convert those 2030s into a big score or a monumental contribution. So I believe uh, that is on the cards, and uh, what other team to get that uh, other than DC? And apart from that, I believe change of venue for DC would be difficult for them to adjust uh, since it's, uh, it's their first game at Chepo of this season. Uh, and yeah, I, I like them. I like being an MI fan still, I advise DC if they can bring in a, a spinner all-rounder, a spinning all-rounder, that would be a huge advantage for them. And yeah, the rest, uh, I, I think Mumbai is going to uh, like <clears throat> blow them. But let's see. <laughs> so, I mean, about Rohit Sharma's form, I feel not only MI fans, but all India fans would be hoping for him to, you know, come good at the opening slot because of the World T20 that will be held in similar home conditions for them. A uh, quick last question to both of you. Whom do you think will be the highest run scorer and the highest wicket taker in tomorrow's match between DC and MI? Akshar, you go first. Highest run scorer. Uh, Shikhar Dhawan. 